All right, we're going to look at some Riemann sums some more, um, and particularly on this lesson, um, we are calculating Riemann sums from a table and not an explicit function like we started with. Um, and then again, there's two kinds of table problems that we do. So this video is going to focus on uniform widths. Okay, and when I say that, I want you to look at the first table. I'm talking about where the x change is the same throughout. So this one is going up two units every time. So that's uniform width. Same distance between x. That is not the right letter. <laughs> okay, and then what we will study later is um, very cleverly titled non-uniform widths. So that means we're going to have different distances, God, letters, widths, different distances between x, okay? So if we look at, let me kind of clear this out now. Um, if we look at the directions, it says use the left, right, and midpoint Riemann sums from the data in the table to approximate the area under the unknown function f of x. So what we're doing is we're making an approximation in this problem for the definite integral from 0 to 16 of f of x dx. And the reason I know that is because the beginning x is 0 and the last x is 16. So sometimes it will be presented to you that way, especially in delta math if you do practice on there. So it's the same idea. All right. So let's look at what, what we can here. Um, uh, so this is a left endpoint sum where n equals 4. All right, so we have to kind of take the idea of rectangles that we were doing previously and, and still be doing that, but now we only have numbers to look at, okay? So what, I mean, potentially you could, I mean, this would kind of take forever, right? You could map out what this particular data set looks like, and, and that's what we want to do. But as we do these more and more, I think you'll learn you don't have to do that. So these, you know, values are going to be all over the place, whatever they are. Okay, so what we have to do is we have to look at the table, determine, right, our left endpoint based on what we, you know, used to do, and then pull this y value that would determine the height of this first rectangle from the table. All right, so um, if we're going to do um, n equals 4, first thing we want to do is to calculate the, you know, calculate the width. of each rectangle. So we're going to use that b minus a over n. So b minus a over n in this problem would be the b value is 16, the a value is 0. Again, those are the first and last x's in this table. And then dividing it by the given n value of 4 tells us that each rectangle is going to be 4 units wide. So when I drew this pink rectangle up here, Technically, that pink rectangle is kind of inaccurate because these rectangles are going to be four units wide. So whatever that left endpoint is at zero, the y value of it, that's going to be the height of our first one. So we can kind of look at this table in this fashion where zero to four, this is my first interval. My second interval is four to eight, then eight to 12, and then 12 to 16. So each of those are four units wide. Okay. So now we're going to find the heights. And the more you do this, the easier it will be. So our, like we just wrote out there, our first interval is 0 to 4. So the height of the rectangle at that point, right, we're using 0 because it's the left endpoint, and the height that goes with that is 39. Okay, and then from 4 to 8, again, 4 is the left x value of that interval, so we will use 35. And then 8 to 12, 8 is the left endpoint, so we'll use the y value that goes with that of 0. And then 12 to 16, the y value at 12 is 29. And that is what we will use for our height, okay? And then three is to uh, sum up of the areas. Um, sum up, oops, areas using base times.
times all the heights added together. And just to preview what's happening um, for non-uniform widths, right, is um, instead of there being one single base out front and then adding up all the heights inside these parentheses, we would have a series of base times height plus base times height plus base times height. We'd have to individually write out each uh, rectangle's area because all the bases are different, different, different. Okay, so that's just a preview of what's to come. So, oh heck, so what's different today is that we don't have to use that. So let's create my area, is that every single rectangle has a base of four, and then I'm gonna add up all the heights, 39, 35, zero, and 29, to get my um, overall area. And then again, this one you probably would be asked to do without a calculator, so you'd have to come up with that um, four times, oh geez, I'm so old, um, 40 and 30 is 70, so it's 68 and 35, 103. So this would be 412 for our answer. All right, so let's move down to the second one. Now you'll notice a couple things are changing in the second one so you can see how these types of problems play out. Now we're switching to right endpoint and we're also editing right our um, number of rectangles to be eight. So when we do step one here where we calculate the width, right, or technically the base, whichever way you wanna call it, of the rectangle, we are doing um, these are the same numbers again, so 16 minus 0, um, B minus A divided by N is 8 this time, so now each rectangle is only going to be 2 units wide. Okay, so for part 3 here, I'm going to have a lot of intervals, 0 to 2, 2 to 4, 4 to 6. All right, I'm going to have 8 intervals where I have to come up with their heights, right? So why did I write? <laughs> three what a moron all right two so step two is coming up with the heights so again for my zero to two interval the height that I would be using is since this is a right endpoint is off of the x value two because two is to the right of zero and then the the y value that's paired with that is 48 okay and then let's see from two to four the height I would get um, would be so let me switch colors here to make it clear. So now from two to four, the right end point is four compared to two, and I would be using 35. And then the next interval, four to six, right? Now I'm using six, and its y value is 12. Okay, and so on and so forth. So when we have as many rectangles as we have data points here, um, we can go ahead and... Um, we're going to actually make use of every single y value with the exception of 39 um, because that first y value, right, is at a left endpoint. And since we're doing right endpoint sum, it's not going to be in our calculation. So our overall width we know is 2, and then I'm going to sum up 48 plus 35 plus 12, whoa, plus 0. Uh, plus 12, plus 29, plus 36, plus 50. Okay, then total all that up. And I think we get to, just for the sake of time, you ordinarily would have to do that together. Although I've never seen the AP test ask for eight to do without a calculator. So typically you get um, three, four, or five on the AP test. Okay, so we get 444 for that total. So you can see the left end point is 412, the right end point is 444. And lastly, we're gonna switch up here to midpoints. We're back to n equals four. So if I do b minus a divided by n to get the width of each one, it's 16 minus zero divided by four. So each rectangle is four units wide again. So my intervals will set up like this, okay? Um, and now when I calculate my heights for the first interval, zero to four, what gets really interesting here is that the midpoint of that interval is two, 
right? So that means when I come up with the height for this interval, I'm actually using the height at the number two and using 48 for my first rectangle, okay? So to get a visual for this, again, let's say, let's zoom in here at zero, two, and four. On this first interval, if I made a plot of these points, let's say, uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Let's pretend these are tens. So 0, 39 is here. I'm just plotting the points in the table. 2, 48 is up here. And 4, 35 is here. My first rectangle for this interval, because we use the height at 2 of 48, right? It would span 4 units and be 48 units tall. Okay, so that's my first area. All right, and then the, the pattern would continue. So now um, between four and eight, my next interval, right? Six is the midpoint of that. So my height I would use is 12. Okay, and then from eight to 12, uh, my height is 12 again because I'm using 10 as my midpoint. And then lastly, from 12 to 16, I am using 14 and my height of 36. So my summation in the end, my area approximation will equal 4, my base, times the sum of my heights, 48 plus 12 plus 12 plus 36. I should circle these two in the table so you kind of see the patterns that emerge right um if you look back at the blue one we used all these left values of each interval then in the purple we switched to right endpoints and then for midpoints we were in the middle right of each interval so you can see how that works uh total of this one i think is 432 <clears throat> so next time we'll cover what happens when the x values between um each data point are or the distance between each x value